Hey guys, welcome to IT Assist. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you the backup software called Cobian. This is by far my favorite backup software, and it's free, which is awesome. In this video, I'm gonna be installing Cobian on a Windows 10 workstation, but this will also work on a server. So let's go ahead and get started. Before you even install this program, you have to make sure that you have .NET 3.5 framework installed. So if you do a Google search, make sure that you get it from Microsoft's website. Go ahead and click download. Um, ignore these recommendations and click this blue link here. It says no thanks and continue to DirectX and use a runtime web installer. Click that. And then you'll get the option to save this. So after you save it, go ahead and run it. It will download the necessary files and install them onto your computer. Once that's installed, you're ready to download Cobian. The website is cobiansoft.com and the version that we're gonna be using is Cobian Backup 11. This software is a little bit old, but it still works really well on today's computers. Go ahead and click the download here link. Click on Cobian Backup 11 and then save the file. Once you have it downloaded, go ahead and right click Run as administrator. If UAC pops up, hit yes. All right, hit next, accept conditions. Now this is really important. Install the volume shadow copy requester. This is why we need .NET 3.5 framework. Without it, you can't install this service. And this service will allow you to backup files that are already in use. Whether a user has the file open or a program has the file open, it will still back up the file. So we definitely wanna have that. I always recommend installing this as a service because as a service, it'll always run in the background. It doesn't require someone to be logged in. So you can restart a computer and never log in and the service will still run in the background and run all your jobs, which is a really great feature. For the service options, you have two options. You have use the system account or you can use a regular account. For the system account, if you hover over it, you can actually see a message. You cannot access network resources if you use the system account. What does that mean? It means if you're trying to back up your files to another computer or a server or even a network share or a NAS or anything like that, you won't be able to do it with the system account because the system account's permissions stop at the computer. You only have access to your resources on your computer. So if we use a regular account, then we can use that account to authenticate to network shares on other computers. So depending on your situation, you can either use the system account or a regular account. In my case, I'm gonna use a regular account. To see what account I'm using, just type CMD, and then open up a command prompt. Type in the command, who am I, all one word. And it will tell you the user account and the computer that you're connected to. I'm on Win 10 Pro computer. And the user account is office-1. So that's the account that I'm going to use. Office-1. And then enter in your password. Then hit next. Install. If you get any red letters during this install process, it means that you did something wrong. Either you don't have .NET 3.5 or you entered the wrong password or the user account that you're using is not a local administrator. So just make sure it's either a local administrator or a domain admin. Next thing I wanna show you really fast, if you open up services, by typing services in the search, if you scroll down, you actually see Cobian 11 Gravity it is installed as a service now. And here's the volume shadow copy requester. Both of these should be running in order for this program to work properly. If you see them as stopped, then we have a problem. You just right click it and go ahead and start. So if you look in the bottom right hand corner, the icon looks kind of like a fan. If you double click it, the interface will open. And now I'm gonna show you why this is such a powerful tool. If you go to tools and then options, there's a few things I want to show you here. If you go to log, there's a checkbox right here for email log files. If you check that box, 
you can actually go down here to mail and you can get an email sent to you that will tell you whether a backup is successful or if there's a problem. This is a really cool feature that they have built in. The other thing I want to show you is you can back up to an FTP server, which is nice if you have an FTP server that you want to connect to. Just remember that FTP is not secure, so you should probably only do that if it's on your local network. So now let's create our first backup job by hitting this plus. The first backup I'm going to set up is just a simple daily backup. Make sure it's enabled. Include subdirectories, yes. And create separated backups using timestamps. This is really important because if you hover over this, it will give you a little message. It will let you know that if you don't check this, you're going to overwrite your backups every time. And if that's what you want, that's great. Just go ahead and uncheck that box. But if you want to have multiple versions of your backups, you're going to want to check that box. Make sure we use volume shadow copy. Of course, that's very important. As far as backup type, we have full incremental differential and dummy. Dummy is if you just want to run it as a test or you don't actually want to back up any files. But I'm going to explain to you what full incremental and differential are. I prepared this visual document for you so you can understand exactly what's happening. On the left, of course, we have no backup, so it's just your files as they exist now on your file system. Um, the next column, I explain the different types of backups, incremental, differential, and full. The numbered columns are each instance of a backup. So first would be your first backup, second would be your second backup. Let's talk about incremental. So after your first full backup, your second backup will only backup files that have changed since your last backup. In this case, it was a full backup, so it's just any changes. The backup after that, which would be your third backup, will only backup changes since your second backup or your last backup. It doesn't care about your full backup. All it cares about is the last backup that was successful. On your fourth backup, all it cares about is the last backups that were successful. So it's only going to backup files that have changed since your third backup. It doesn't care about your second and it doesn't care about your full. In this situation, my fifth backup is when I start this cycle all over again and I do another full backup. So real quickly, let's go over incremental real fast. Full backup, then only the changes, and then only the changes since the last backup, and then only the changes since the last backup and then a full backup. Differential backups are a little bit different. You start with a full backup, and then on your next backup, it backs up all the changes since your last full backup. On your third backup, it will back up all changes since your full backup. On your fourth backup, it will back up all changes since your full backup. So every time it does a backup, it only checks since your last full. It doesn't care about the second and third backups. And then your fifth backup, in this situation, I have it performing another full backup. And so this process would start all over again. Full backup, of course, is backing up all of your files every single time. As you can see from this graphic that I created, incremental backups are not going to take up as much room as differential backups. And full backups, of course, are going to take up the most amount of room. So depending on how much space you have, it's your choice to decide what kind of backup you want to do. In our scenario, we're going to choose differential. If we click on the files tab, we can choose our source, which is what files we're backing up and the destination. So if we click add, we can choose the directory. I'm going to back up the desktop, the documents folder. and the pictures. For destination, I have this Western Digital Passport 500 gig hard drive. If I open up this, you see that I created a folder called backup and the folder is empty. So this is where we're gonna put our files. So let's add this destination. Under schedule, Let's do this daily because we named the backup daily. So I think we should probably make our schedule follow a daily routine. We can choose what time it's going to back up because we installed Cobian as a service. A user doesn't have to be logged in in order for this to run. However, the computer does have to be turned on. So just pick a time the computer is going to be on. It can even be during the middle of the day because we have VSS writer installed. It'll back up the files that are in use. I'm going to do the end of the day. Let's do 5 p.m. Let's move on to dynamics. 
Here's where you choose how many full copies you want, and it really just depends on how much room you have and how many versions you want to keep. So I'm going to choose to make four full copies, that's about a month, and I'm going to do three differential copies. This process will repeat for four weeks, and then the backups that are the oldest are actually going to be overwritten with the new copies, which is a nice feature because you don't have to keep going back and deleting your backups. I like to pick a day of the week to do my full backups. I'm going to choose Friday because then we get a full backup for that week. Under the archive tab, if you look under strong encryption, you have an option to encrypt your backup. I think this is really important if you're backing up to an external drive that other people have access to, or if the computer's out in a community area where a lot of people walk by it, or if your server is not locked up in a server rack, then you might consider encrypting your backup. I recommend 256-bit encryption. Choose a passphrase and make sure you write it down because if you forget this password, there's no recovering your data. In my example, I'm going to turn this off. Under the filter tab, we can choose to include files and folders, or we can choose to exclude some. If you look at the user files, you'll notice that this person has some personal stuff. And documents, they have some personal documents. And you might not want to back up these files and folders to the company backup drive. So let's go ahead and exclude those. So I'm going to choose the whole directory. And under documents, there's this personal folder. I'm just going to hit OK. And I'll do the same thing for the personal pictures. So now when the backup job runs, we're not going to be backing up these personal folders. Under events, there's a really cool feature. You can actually add events to happen before you run a backup and after you run a backup. So if you click add, maybe you want to stop a service so you can better back up a file because you're not convinced VSS is going to work. You can close a program. You can run a command line script. You can execute a process. You can do any of these things pre or post backup, which I think is a really cool feature. With everything all set up, let's go ahead and hit OK to create the job. You can see the size of the entire backup right here. Let's go ahead and hit the play button here so we can run this backup. So here's the log. Starting VSS, that's good. That way it'll back up the files that are open. And it looks like backup's done. There's no errors. And out of 16 files, it backed up 16. That's great. And the total size is 1.25 megabytes. Let's go ahead and look at our destination folder so we can see what that looks like. So I'll open up my PC, go into the passport, and the backup folder. So the first time it does a backup, these are just full copies. Now let's see what happens if we run the backup again. It's going to process all the files again. And I'm going to show you what the folder looks like that it creates. You can see that these are all differential backups. And look at there's a nice timestamp on each folder. It has today's date and the time, 22, 14, 53. But if you look, if I go in here, you can see all the documents are backed up. I hope this video helped you understand a little bit more about backups so you can make an informed decision when it comes time to choose. I hope that you guys have a better understanding about Cobian, about how it works, how it's probably one of the most powerful backup programs, gives you a, a ton of customization. And in this situation, I just showed you how to do a simple local backup to a hard drive. I'll do an advanced video on Cobian. I'll show you how to set up daily, weekly, monthly, and yearly backups, as well as backing up to somewhere else on your network that you might want to save your files to. So thanks a lot guys, I appreciate it, and we'll see you next time.